So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, I couldn't be more excited. If you're watching Paramount Plus at the moment, there is a show dominating the streaming charts, which is Halo. And our next guest has worked on many projects like the Avengers uh, movies, Thor, Love and Thunder, Shazam, Suicide Squad. Literally, the list could go on. It's Justin Howell. Justin, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing absolutely amazing. Good to see and, you, Brian. and I've got to say, um, stunts for me has always been a passion because ever since I was a kid, there was a TV pro pro program on called The Fall Guy, uh, which I was obsessed with 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 stunts, and I would often throw myself downstairs at school um, <laughs> right because on. because I didn't get in, in, injured. I don't know if I was just lucky it's, or it's just very amazing good. when you're a teenager and you're just invincible. Those days, I remember those days as well. <laughs> <laughs> and and I used to get my friends to hit me in the stomach and and everything oh, yeah. like, like like that. But I later learned. I've got to say, um, I went on and did performing arts at college and um, mm. I went on to do a couple of films and I got taught in stage fighting and mm-hmm. I did a film and I ended up getting my nose broken uh, ah, because ah. the person I was working with uh, as a camera panned past me, yeah. he just went out of routine um, and then actually smacked me right right on the nose. I spun round, hit the bar and uh, oh. blood everywhere. But um it was all fun and games. But uh, before we start talking about your awesome career, uh, these last two years have been such a challenging two years, especially for the industry of stunts and acting and show business. Certainly. I mean, mm-hmm. how have you kept positive? How have you kept mm-hmm. moving forwards? And how has it been over the last two years for you? Right. So initially when COVID happened in a film industry, I was in Toronto at the time, shut down for about six months. So I was actually thankful in the moment because it was a nice time to really adjust and train for myself. I've been training for movie roles and specific things for a long, long time. So the six months was uh, appreciated, actually, at that time. And then when it came back, it came back with a vengeance. And since that time, it's been consistent and rapid fire and uh, a lot of people have been able to progress and move forward in their careers and it's, it's kind of been a blessing that there's such a demand for media at this time because i don't think it's ever been as busy as it is right now so initially it was a little slow but it definitely came back with a vengeance <laughs> yeah so you had time to rest and now it's yeah. to put you at work and literally yeah, yeah. looking you looking at your imdb literally you're so busy i'm surprised you you've got time to do this one wonderful interview um i appreciate so, it right now i actually have three weeks between projects so i'm trying to maximize everything i can <laughs> in this time so you hit me at the perfect time it was very perfect convenient. awesome and and obviously your career as a stunt yeah. person what on earth possessed you to go into this Ooh. such challenging and such dangerous yeah. profession it's, it's, you know, everyone's road into stunts is very different and very unique. For me, I've been doing Taekwondo since I was five years old. So I was a long time martial artist. And then I started pro cheerleading when I was about uh, 14. So I developed tumbling and skills within that. Uh, and then going back to Taekwondo, I was on what was called the demo team, which was kind of like a, a demonstration team for our region. And we traveled across North America uh, doing like board breaking and forms like XMA. And I was like, how do I do demo team forever and it was my dad's idea actually at one point he said what about stunts and i you know i've been a big fan of bruce lee and a lot of different martial arts movies and stuff and i was like yes i would love to do that as a career the difficult thing was finding a path to enter that because it's not exactly drop off your resume at the local film shop and get hired (laughs) so it was a difficult process to get started but it was something i'd known i wanted to do for a very long time and and how how do you get noticed as a stuntman because i can't imagine you you know waiting outside the uh the stunt off office you know trying to get run over no or or trying to fall out of a window or something yeah well this is okay so this is consistent because if you want to get into stunts this is definitely what you should be doing for starters you have to make a demo reel where's my camera this way (laughs) um which is going to consist of like your basic skill set so whatever your background is uh, a lot of people come from martial arts or you could come from maybe a circus background or a pro sport of some kind show what your skills are in like a one minute demo reel build a resume of your like your background in sports and athletics and uh, and have a headshot. And then what you want to do is put those together in a package and try and get it in the hands of stunt coordinators in, in any way you can, whether that be email or dropping by on set and trying to hand them a hard package. However, you can get your skills in the hands of stunt coordinators, better chance of you getting hired in the future. 
Mm. I mean, is there a yeah. um, because all stunts can be different. Yeah. You 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 see a lot of stunt Don't doubles make. and a lot of stunt performers specialise in 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 certain areas yeah. um i think a local lad that lives not far well i don't know if he lives there now but mm -hmm. damien walters um he's of course damien, so damien walters is a legend you must know yeah well well well, <laughs> yeah. well, well he lived in derby i don't i, I don't know if he lives yeah. live, lives in derby now but uh he's just up the road and and yeah. you know he's he's a, a tumbler and he does a lot of like acrobatics yeah. so uh, have, have, have you got a speciality or is it a case of uh, you're trying to own everything lady. Yeah, fighting and falling is my specialty. I'd say one of the things that uh, makes me stand out, my niche is just being six foot three and built. Uh, there's not a lot of six foot three built guys that, that fight consistently and, and fight and move well. So that's definitely kind of my pocket that I play in. But you're absolutely right. There's a lot of very specific skill sets and stunts. Like some guys are just driving guys. Those are your mm. like Fast and the Furious and drifting guys. Some guys are just fire guys. Some guys are just high fall guys. So definitely the thing I do the most is just fighting and falling. And, and I that, like it that and, way. <laughs> and is that the safest? <laughs> because uh, when you th when you is, say this is one of the reasons I like that. Yes, I like trying to stay safe. I'd like to have a long safe career. <laughs> because can you imagine being a stuntman and just specialising in fire? I mean, oh. that has got to be something wrong, surely. The fire because terrifies it's like... me. Yeah, yeah. But you they're know, good at it. The guys that do it, they make their own gel a lot of the time. They have their own safety team there, and they I think they love it. So <laughs> all the power to them. And and when you were starting out, I mean, was there a, a stunt man or a stunt performer that you looked up to, or you wanted to sort of sort of challenge Ooh. in later years? <laughs> Definitely the ones that I looked up to. But Bobby Hall and Hanton is like an absolute legend, uh, one of the best in the industry for sure. Damien Walters again is also an, just an absolute legend. Alex Alex Kishkevich, who doubles Deadpool in Vancouver, uh, just guys that train nonstop and have skill sets that you want to kind of develop and try to get to their level so definitely mm. there's still guys like that i could the list goes on mm. i mean i had bobby yeah. hanton on 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 the show uh, oh, about a year you? and a half ago and wow. i had COVID, i had covid at the time and yeah. i was trying to fight through the interview i was like no i've got to mm. do 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 this and he was such a stellar guy um oh, i mean yeah. what makes for a good stunt performer you know is um, it physique is it mental it's, it's definitely athletic background. You definitely need to be a performer. You need to be consistent. People need to want to work with you. So you need to be a likable person. Uh, yeah. And then just delivering consistently all the time, I would say is the most important things. Mm -hmm. And being willing to adapt and change on the fly because that's a lot of film. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I can imagine. I mean, how yeah. dangerous is your job because i know that i mean i've spoken to a gentleman called jack gill he was on the show a while mm -hmm. back and he's a stunt coordinator and he okay. said that years ago you know it was more da da dangerous because there was a lot more risks but now with, yeah. with you know advancement in technology and and, and ways of doing things i mean how mm -hmm. dangerous is is your job in what you do I think certainly, I think he's right. Certainly over time, we've reduced the risk as much as possible. I like to think now that it's kind of a high performance art, more so than I think back in the day, it was a lot of cowboys and just like huck it and go for it. Whereas it's very much fine tuned athletic performance at this point. So is it dangerous? Yes, it can still be dangerous, especially if you're not ready for the stunts that are coming your way. So you definitely want to be prepared as much as you can and keep everything as safe as possible. But again, the riggers and the stunt coordinators where it's at right now, it's it's much safer, I think, than it used to be. <laughs> I'm just thinking when you said be prepared and everything like that. So yeah. basically not me as a teenager throw myself down, <laughs> yeah, down yeah, the yeah, stairs. Yeah, if they're asking you for a certain element, make sure it's something in your wheelhouse. And if it's not, don't tell them you can do it. And if you're not sure make sure first <laughs> <laughs> and and you mentioned earlier on about obviously your background so what sort of training mm -hmm. have you actually done then to be a stuntman and and where you are now currently uh, i do a lot of open gym training so again most of the stuff i do is fighting and falling so a lot of it is just training fights and and fall stuff with other stunt people so in toronto we have an open gym called uh, the monkey vault that we go to which is actually owned by a stunt guy as well uh in la they have jam fitness so or a lot or uh jam gymnastics i'm not actually sure just jam <laughs> um just facilities where stunt people can train and i think that's one of the most important things especially with fighting is just being able to flow and work with different body types and different movement styles and really adapt to that mm. and oh, i think yeah, yeah. 
think that's the most and, important. And also, I mean, a lot of stunt stunt men I've no, no, noticed are part of companies. I mean, are you independent mm-hmm. or are you part of? Yeah, because, I'm absolutely because I know this. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, I, I think there's... it's. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of give and take. It depends on the country. For starters, I know uh, like there's Campus University Cascades in uh, out of France. So some countries have these teams, but I would say most stunt performers nowadays are probably more independent. I think teams are maybe a little bit of a thing of the past. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, yeah. because because I think one of the most prominent ones is Stunts Unlimited, which right. uh, are literally everywhere. You see the yes. hats, you see the emblem. Absolutely. I've actually got one of the hats and um, a medallion yeah. that got sent 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 to to me a while while back. All right, um, I like wearing it. I just pretend that I'm a stuntman. Obviously, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, went, I went down the stairs yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's yeah. talk about Halo because um, yes. I've, I've got to say it's just an awesome show. And and you double for Pablo uh, as 117, Master Chief. There's an image in the middle there of, of you. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the best opening I've ever seen to any show. It really is. Literally full oh, yeah? of action. It got me gripped straight, straight Very away. Cool. You see, I'm not a mm-hmm. gamer, so for me, okay. I I went into it with open eyes. I didn't okay. judge, you know. I I just thought it 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 was epic. I mean, how was that to wear the suit? I mean, was it Ooh, comfortable? Was it tough? <laughs> Seventy pounds of fiberglass and plastic. It's wow. uh, it's not light. It's not terribly uncomfortable. It's just uh, restricting with movement. I think is the biggest thing. Yeah. Mm. It's a big chest plate, so you kind of your limit on where you can get your arms in front of you. You can't quite touch your head over top, so it's very limiting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean, I know the suit is supposed to make us look super and move extra well, and it certainly doesn't do that in real life. <laughs> I think I've got an image as well, just there. Oh, look at that! Oh yeah, that's popular what, for sure. <laughs> what, what what a cool image! And then um, and then and then I've got a few Im- Im- images there. Look at that! Oh, there do, you go. Do you know all this the hard? Fun. All the hard work, and you get to get to relax, relax as well. Um, Absolutely. I mean, how much work actually went into that opening scene? Because that o- o- opening scene was just epic. It really was. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that that's the magical scene where the Spartans <laughs> initially show up. So I suppose mm. I shouldn't spoil too much, but uh, <laughs> ooh, that would have would have been weeks of rehearsals for sure. I think we shot there for. How long do we shoot there for? Either a week or two weeks. I can't remember specifically. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's a process for sure. And then that was first and second unit shooting there. And then rehearsals in between and rehearsals beforehand. So all in all, maybe maybe four total weeks to get that scene. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've I mean spread we... out over the course of yeah, yeah different days mm. and such. Yeah. I mean, we see a lot of footage of the mm-hmm. rehearsals, which I think look am- amazing because you yeah. get to put a bit of the effects on afterwards, like gunshots and, ev- and, ev- and everything like, like, like that. I mean, how much work goes into the rehearsals opposed to actually shooting? Ooh, so the nice thing about shooting on the day is once you've, you've gotten it, you've gotten it. So sometimes that's one shot, sometimes that's 20 shots. But uh, rehearsals are often like, a, it's a building process. So it's a lot of uh, research and development and learning how the stunt's going to move and how it's going to work and how we make the physics look proper within the stunt. Um, so yeah, if you're seeing a stunt play on the day, it's probably done anywhere between one and five times. And then it's probably been rehearsed for this show specifically, probably 30 times before that. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a a building process to get it to that point that you see it on camera. And how did you get approached um, to play Master Chief? Because do stuntmen Mm -hmm. audition? I mean, or are Uh, they just approached? Not typically. Sometimes we'll, again, going back to the demo reel, sometimes we'll send in our demo reel to projects that ask for it or if you're seeking something out specifically. But in this case, I doubled Pablo on American Gods before and he had already started on Halo. And I guess they were a little bit into production when uh, he called me and said they were looking for a chief double that could do the movement that Pablo was looking for. And he requested me. So I went down partway through the season to really dive into all the action stuff with them. Mm. And and yeah. and talk, talk, talking about Pablo, he's obviously in awesome shape as well. He really. Oh yeah, is. he's, he's going to be even better shape this year. I think he's trying to get to like <laughs> two hundred and fifty pounds cut, and Jesus. he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah. Not, uh, yeah. Well, hopefully not as big as Alan Richson in um, in, in Reacher. Also he was a just... big dude. Have you seen him right now? Oh my god, he's got to be he's got to be two forty at like seven percent body fat. That dude mm-hmm. is crazy he looks like yeah. he couldn't clap his hands behind his back literally you know what though he he will run marathons like twice a week 
The really? dude is unstoppable. Unstoppable. He's crazy. He's unstoppable. Yeah. He, he was enormous in that, and it was just a, fan, a fantastic oh, yeah. show as well. Yeah. Um, so at what point did Pablo step aside and you step in? Because obviously him being in good shape, you know, was <laughs> yeah. it a case of him saying, was he a prima donna? Was he one of these no, actors no, that goes, no, no, no I'm going to break a pa- nail? <laughs> Pablo's a, a very athletic dude. Pablo can do pretty much everything. So uh, the stuff that I do is going to be the stuff that, they either don't allow Pablo to do, or sometimes Pablo's on a separate unit, or if it's just in-depth choreo and we just don't have time. Those would be the situations where I would step in. But a lot of it is is we're building the fights and R&Ding the fights, and then Pablo will do it on the day in most cases. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I mean, I've got to imagine as well, being a stunt double opposed to just doing stunts, is, yeah. is it different in the way that you approach it? Because you're literally mimicking that person. So obviously, yeah. you know, is there a lot more work and, and, and what's the method behind it? Yeah, I, I think for Pablo and I in this case, it's trying to find the movement for that Master Chief character together. So certainly Pablo... He has a lot of swagger that he brings to the character and this like hard exterior. And I'm trying to adapt to that as well while maintaining kind of a fluidity and a consistency with the movement. So it's a little bit of dance between the both of us, I think, when it comes to the combat. Mm. And have yeah. you seen the show in its full glory? I have. Well, it's, it's not fully out yet, so I haven't seen end to end, but I've seen the first, uh, I think we're at four episodes. I've seen the first four episodes. Mm. Yeah. And, and, I've got and to I'm say excited. That... This week, this week, there's going to be a big action sequence that comes out as well. So I'll have to, I'll oh. have to see what you think of that. Oh. So everyone yeah. that's got Paramount Plus is absolutely going to be buzzing uh, after absolutely. the next ep- episode then. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I've got Bentley on the show at the weekend, uh, another, oh, right another, an, another Spartan that's got the deepest voice I've ever heard in my whole life. Doesn't he? Just echoing and booming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so with, with your career, you've literally worked mm. on so many amazing... I mean, I've put mm. three at the bottom there of the screen, and do you mm-hmm. know what? I could fill this whole screen with everything that you've worked <laughs> on. I mean, what has been the scariest sequence you've ever done so far What's in your career? What's the scariest? I, I, I'm going to say it just because it was early in my career. The scene got cut from the movie, but in Suicide Squad, I was doubling Joel Kinnaman, who plays Rick Flagg. And at one point, uh, I was in the driver's seat of an 18-wheeler, and it's full of, the scene is it's full of explosives in the back, and it's driving towards a barricade. He jumps out of the 18-wheeler and rolls out while the truck rolls into the barricade and boom, blows up the whole barricade. So on the day, they had a stunt driver in the back, pretending, or driving the rig while I'm pretending to drive the rig. Uh, We're going 40 kilometers an hour down a uh, downtown highway in Toronto, and I have to jump out of this 18-wheeler and roll out on the concrete while it whizzes by. That was probably the scariest one to date because that was my first year in stunts as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. I loved it. And what does your other half think of your job? Because, <laughs> you know, Aurelia's on your a stunt Instagram... Girl too. She's, a, she's a badass. She's doubling she? Charlize Theron on uh, Fast and the Furious right now. <laughs> is she? <laughs> yeah. Oh, in that case the then. <laughs> are, you quite, are you quite competitive um, in the way of stunt work with her? No, no, not at all. She's a badass. She's uh, she comes from a boxing background. She's a much better boxer than I am. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So no yeah. domestics in your household. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, no. no. <laughs> um, so before doing these big, big stunts, you know, how how do you prepare for it? I mean, what's going through your mm-hmm. mind? Because you know, it's one thing go, going on stage and and yeah. you know saying your lines, but when there's yeah. so many moving parts, I mean, what is going through your mind before? Ooh, uh, you know, I just try to focus for the most part. The nice thing about stunts is we get multiple takes. So uh, unlike stage where you get one shot and it's got to be it's got to be your best the first time because you immediately move on. Uh, it's less pressure in film because obviously you want to get it right and you want to get it perfect. But if you don't get it perfect the first time, go again. Mm-hmm. Um, for bigger stunts, yeah, it's like a deep breath and a lot of focus and you want to just make sure you're doing the things that you need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer. <laughs> but but for me, I'll probably be uh, bricking myself to be honest. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you don't. I don't. I don't want to get that like woo like uh, mm. mentality because then you start doing things that are outside of what you would normally do. Which mm. you, I think, you just want to remain focused on the task at hand. Mm. I think is the best and, approach for that. And um, um, we did mention it earlier on about obviously how safe the profession mm-hmm. has become over the years. Certainly. But have you had any injuries? Have you? 
you know, how um, many mishaps? Knock on wood, no no serious injuries that have taken me out of the out of work for an extended period of time. I've blown ankles. Um, I've, I've like broken a finger. I've broken like the little side bone on my uh, on my foot, and then like tons of bruises and soft tissue damage. But nothing that's taken me out for a long term period of time, which is unusual. A lot of people have had injuries, a lot of concussions, mm-hmm. a lot of broken bones. is pretty normal. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> my yeah. job seems very boring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, do you see yourself being a, a, a you know a stuntman for many many years, or have you got a yeah, plan that's, in place? That's the goal. Yeah, certainly that's the goal. I, I really love performing right now, so I don't see slowing down on performing anytime too soon. Um, I think eventually moving into fight coordinating and coordinating is is eventually the goal, but I think that's still a little ways out. I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. And what's the... Um, I know like for like the people like dan- dancers, because of uh, mm-hmm. the impact on their knees, you know, the mm-hmm. life expe- expectancy of their careers is normally like mid-30s. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I've... You know, is there a thing within the stunt industry where the average age is a- around, you know, or or, Ooh, or, or is it a- oh, average age to retire or move into coordinating is? Yeah, uh, I'd be I'd be guessing here, but I'd probably say late, late 30s, early 40s is pretty normal for that. But then again, some people are performing well into their 50s. So it's, it's all relative. Mm-hmm. I think it depends how you take care of your body and what you're doing and, and what stunts you're doing as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and you put all that trust in the people around you to make sure that everything is is Very is, is, is safe yeah. yes yeah and, you want to make and... sure you're working with people that you trust it's so important yeah mm-hmm. absolutely the riggers you want to make sure that the rigging team you're working with is a rigging team you trust and that when they're putting you on these lines these lines are going to be safe and they're going to do what they say they're going to do yeah very important mm-hmm. And 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 do you notice a change, you know, with with safety protocols on set? Do you know when? I mean, unfortunately, fortunately, the the incident with um, Alec Baldwin and and yeah. the the unfortunate shooting. Uh, I mean, yeah. have have you seen sort of like a fallout from 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 that in how things are managed on set? Um, I, I think for firearms specifically, my guess would be over time we're going to move towards more airsoft and less mm. uh, less blanks and practical firearms. But we'll see. We just got off extraction too. We were doing live firearms the whole time, and it was an amazing experience. And there was uh, obviously no issues at all whatsoever there. That was also one of the best stunt teams in the world. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm so glad that we're getting a second one because the oh, first yeah, one me was too. awesome. And that end scene Dude, where where he's in the, swi- in the swimming level. pool. Just- and this you see him. Crazy. Oh, yeah, it's just fun. It's just it's just so so good, so fast moving, and just full of oh, action. Yeah. So so yeah. I'm so looking forward. And you doubled um, Chris for that as well. Yeah, I doubled I doubled Chris on Extraction uh, along with Bobby, um, and then uh, and Adam Lytle as well, I should say. And then I went on to Thor reshoots directly off of Extraction too as well. Wow. for chris wow. yeah. and what's and what's what's chris chris like in person i can ima- imagine him being quite quite a nice he's, oh he's nice yeah guy. super chill the nicest guy he's also incredibly capable he picks up choreo like immediately we'll show him 10 beats and he'll say okay got it and then he'll just do it <laughs> perfectly boom the whole thing oh yeah, so you great. just walk off yeah. and have a cup of tea <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> let, 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 let him get right, on, 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 on with it yeah. so yeah. so with the stunt industry the one thing i've yeah. never been able to figure out is why it's not recognized at the oscars because Ooh, you know it's thing. one of those things yeah. that's that's been talked about for many many sure. years so sure. why do you think it's not not included Okay, cu- couple thoughts. First of all, um, I don't know how much recognition they would like to keep going to the actors because the actors are still doing a lot of it. And most of the process of building the stunts is behind the scenes and before it gets to camera or a lot of it. And the second one, I think it could be uh, a safety issue. I'd hate to think that they put a, a stunt category in the Oscars and then people start mm-hmm. trying to go bigger and harder and crazier. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it becomes a safety issue. So those would be my two arguments. Um, on the same hand, I'd love to see them get recognized. I think maybe a stunt coordinator award would be nice, but mm. we'll see in time. Mm. I mean, I mean, Jack Gill did 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 mention that they're letting in stunt coordinators as part of the yeah. the board, but not being able to win anything. And like I explained, right. it's like yeah. being part of a, a a golf club, but not being able yeah. to play a round of golf. It just, right. exactly. It, does, exactly. It, it, does, it, it doesn't make sense. But saying yeah. that though, you do get your own awards. Is, yes, is we it... do. We have a we have a tourist stunt awards. Yeah, so yeah. As you, well so as, and then can... we have we have in Canada we have local ones as well. We have the uh, like actor stunt awards 
and such too. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs the Oscars? It's overrated. <laughs> wow. The last one. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into that because I don't. I don't. I don't want to give it any more. You know, fuel because uh, I yeah. think that everyone yeah. should stop talking about about, about it now because it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, so, so you've worked on so many blockbusters and doubled for so many people. Mm-hmm. Who has been your favourite that you've doubled for, and why? Ooh, well, Chris. It's got to be Chris. He's just so dope, and the roles are so unique. And like Thor was an absolute dream. This was like my dream as a kid. So being able to wear the suit and I, I don't want to spoil too much because this movie is a doubt yet. So we'll just like, hold the weapons. <laughs> oh. Do you know very, what? The trailer cool. is awesome. The trailer came out I yeah. think it was yesterday or the day before and it's yeah. been breaking the internet. It really has. But do you oh, know absolutely. when going for it to be a double for an actor, um, you know, mm. do you look at that ac- actor and think, oh my God, I've got to put on 20 pounds of muscle or... Oh, oh dude, all the time. Either putting on weight or cutting down weight all the time this is like uh one of the things i do the most it tends to be guys that are my height i'm six three are either like uh, very lean and ripped or like super jacked like you look at alan and pablo and chris they're huge and then i've doubled a lot of actors that are very lean so i've gone all sorts of up and down this is this is something i've got dialed at this point <laughs> yeah you're just waiting for that call for jack black to uh, have a uh, yeah, stunt double. yeah i might have i might have to lose seven inches of height to double jack black but yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, but you'll be able to eat whatever you want exactly really, cheesecake really every good. day um and also you know you've worked on so many great things uh i think i've got a picture of uh, avengers endgame just there as oh, well yeah. which is yeah, uh, yeah, an, yeah. Aw- an awesome picture i mean with yeah. these projects do you ever get a chance to maybe i don't know liberate um a few items um i.e oh, you know i wish i wish i was th- I, on thor i was like oh man if i could bring home a hammer that'd be sick but no. chris has got like 20 so <laughs> I, i'm sure he does right i should just i'll text him i'll tell him i need it I need but hammer. you're not you're not taking you're just looking after it you're being the you know there you go the guardian yeah yeah so so you don't you don't get anything so is it just like crew gifts or do you get crew gifts i'm trying to do i have anything i'm trying to think i have a robin star from titans (laughs) yeah yeah but no it's pretty difficult pretty difficult because uh props keeps a, a tight grip on those for sure so there's no chance of you having a um a 117 helmet anywhere uh, no, those helmets are those helmets are very very expensive. There's like mm. uh, fans and stuff built into the helmets, and I think they only have like maybe three or four practical ones in total. So it's it's a difficult thing for sure. Oh, I'll tell you what, because the sponsors of my show, uh, their prop store, and they're based in LA and London, and they sell uh, film use props, and they uh, they oh, sell they a lot of cool. stunt stunt uh, stuff as well that, that that you know stunt, sure. stunt performers have worn and used, yeah. and they go for a fortune. They really do, and oh, yeah. there are collectors you. out there that would abs- abs- absolutely love something from one mm-hmm. of those shows. Um, mm-hmm. So, is 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 there someone that you would love to double for that you haven't already? Uh, ooh, who would I love to double for that I haven't already? Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool would be very cool. I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? I've always yeah. wondered how 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 much of Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds and how much of it is a stunt person because oh, that's a good question. Mm. I would say a lot of it is a stunt person because Deadpool is a very acrobatic character. He yeah. is, and and I can't imagine Ryan, he, he, even though he's funny as hell, no, uh, they doing let a lot of the stuff. No. <laughs> it would be too expensive. It really, oh, yeah. re- re- really would if he injured himself. But uh, let Ryan go over a car off a mini tramp and do a, a twisting gainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's so what's next for you then? So you've got a break. Can you speak yeah. about what 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 you're you're yeah, doing going next? To Halo for season two, back in oh. Budapest. Wow! Mm. Wow! Yes, yeah. this is what I like. You know what? I get so so disappointed when great shows mm-hmm. come out and then they yeah. they just end them, and it's like why? You know? And yeah. we're seeing a lot yeah. of shows now being renewed before you know the end of the season, which is great. Totally. And, Mm-hmm. And hey, hey, Halo is just getting so many great reviews. It really, really is. And mm-hmm. Paramount Plus is coming over to the UK uh, early summer. 
Um, so I yeah. know that everyone is biting at the bit to to get their hands on Halo. Um, okay. And I've got to give a shout out as well to to the work that you did on 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 Titans because it's one of my favourite shows. Oh, thank you. And, oh, really? Um, you like it? <laughs> oh, it's it's, cool. it's, it's just funny. great because it's yeah. you know it's a a nerdy show for adults. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's I've gritty. met Alan on that show. Yeah. <sighs> You know, and I thought I had a picture, but I haven't. I thought I had one to show, but you doubled for him. Uh, I mean, yes. what was that experience like? Again, you're wearing cool cost costumes all the time. I mean, what's, yeah. what's been your favourite to wear? Is it Halo? or it, It's got to be Thor because it was just such a dream as a kid. But Halo is the one that I was the most involved with for sure. And Halo is... It's a very cool costume, so I'm very excited to go back for season two. I, I love the Master Chief character because it's it's kind of like a... It's, he's almost like military meet superhero, and he's like this beacon of hope. It's just a very, very dope character. So mm. I'm definitely excited for, for Master <laughs> Chief as well, for more of Master and Chief. I have got a picture here. And I, I, I just wanted a bit of clarification. Yeah. What was going on here? <laughs> uh, I think so. We were on a trip. We we did a motorcycle trip from uh, up the Highway One in the states from LA to Seattle, and we were camping the whole way up. So I, I'm imagining this is at some point on our way up during the camp. <laughs> because it looks slightly like you're stalking him, and he's just caught you. <laughs> it's like, like like I'm coming to get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, it's probably <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna choke him out. <laughs> That is awesome, but but no, just just Justin, you've been a great guest, and it's been really Thank nice you. to chat about a bit about the industry because it's 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 Hunsung heroes, it really is. Because mm -hmm. without people like yourselves, you know, risking yourself, we won't get these mm -hmm. amazing, you know, stunts. And 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 do you think that there is going to be a time when CGI is going to take over, or will there always be a need for stunt people? I I've theorized about this before. I think that it will move into more motion capture from stunt people. This is totally a theory, by the way. This is not backed by anything at all. Uh, I, I anticipate that there will be more motion capture in the future, so there'll be more work for less people, is my guess. Mm. But we'll mm. see. And, yeah. and, and right now, it... right now, directors are doing more practical stunts than ever, so it seems like it's not slowing down anytime soon. Mm. You see, I'm I'm a massive fan of pra practical things. When you yeah, get too. too too much C CGI, I think it can ruin mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. But no, that's awesome, Justin. You've been a great, great guest. Look after yourself. Thanks, Brian. Keep safe. And I look forward to Extraction 2. Um, I don't think there's a release date yet, or I, I haven't seen it. No, one. that'll be sometime next year, I, I anticipate. <sighs> yeah. Why next year? We need to see it now. <laughs> but no, <laughs> that's great. That. Look after yourself and keep, keep safe, sir. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you.